This is the It's Time to Refresh podcast with Brad Refresh, the podcast about life, music, traveling, shit, literal shit that is, and weird and wacky stories with Brad and a range of guests from the planet Earth. Feel free to share the pod with your pals, your mom, your neighbor's dog, or even your shrink. It's all fun. You can follow our Facebook group called It's Time to Refresh Community or It's Time to Refresh on Instagram. Write into the pod, ask questions, and share your stories. Enjoy the pod! Hey kid, what time is that? It's time to refresh! Uh, back once again with another podcast. Um, I'm not even sure what episode this is anymore, but um, because we're just fucking firing them out every week, and it's <laughs> it's easy to lose track. Um, yeah, this is it's time to refresh podcast. On today's guest, we've got Cal. How we doing, mate? Right. Not too bad, mate. Um, Cal, it's it is just like DJ Cal, isn't it? Like it that's, is, that's, that's what it, it is. Yeah. I was cause I was going to ask you about it because obviously we don't really know it. First time we've met today. And it's like, I don't know, like, we've talked a lot online and it's, uh, and I've seen you pop up on, like, events and that, but as obviously we've been talking, I've seen that you've got, like, a bigger history than, than first teams. Yeah, it's more, more as a raver than anything else, yeah. you know, I, I, I don't even call myself a, a DJ, to be honest, it's just something that I've always been interested in and done, and after being a raver for so long and the people that I knocked around with, it just kind of just went from there it was yeah it's, it's a weird one it is a weird one but, and I, I do love it but it's it, it, it's not something that I'm, I'm gonna try and aim to get a career out of it's just something I do yeah for fun but yeah it's just DJ Cal no weird names no, <laughs> no, no madness no nah, no nah. um well I was gonna I'll start off where are you from because like we've talked like online and, and when you first sent me a voice message I was like uh, so, it's weird you say that because I remember um I was talking to Pricey ages ago after I first met him and I sent him a voice note and he said, literally sent me a message back going, no way do you sound like that. <laughs> I was like, that was it. That was his response. Um, from, well, I was born in Chester. Um, me, me mom, I lived with me nan and granddad and my mum when I was first born. Mm. Dad was out of the picture. Um, and that was in Runcorn. Run so, so just around the corner. Right. But, I just, when I had your accent, I was like, I don't know why I was expecting maybe a Wigan or something yeah. like that. Do you know what I mean? Like that's, the, but I don't know why. I think it just... surprises a few people. Like at <laughs> yeah, first, yeah. But so, what was your sort of earliest sort of memories of music and that sort well, of? Well, like I said, we lived at me um, at me nan's, uh, me and me mum at me nan and granddad's, and she had a younger sister, Leanne. Um, I think my mum was like nineteen, twenty. So, so when my mum started went back to work, she. I'd be in the house with my auntie, who was like 16. Yeah. You know, and it and it is weird, like I was just saying then off, off, the, off the pod, that like, I don't, I can't remember what I had for my tea yesterday, but I vividly remember the time at my nan's. Yeah. Even, I was, I was out there by the time I was three. Yeah. And I just remember, like, being with my auntie then all the time. She'd take me out on the bus, like, we'd go <laughs> shopping, whatever, but she was always into, like, I just, it was always like the, um, you know, black box, ride on time. Yeah, like, right. uh, like I remember, I don't know, like Mr. Vane and 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 stuff like that. And then as you got a bit older, it was. And I, I remember going like the stable. My granddad had a horse. He used to go to the stables, and right. it was a different type of music. But we'd be listening to like country and western, and like stuff like that. But it was mainly me auntie Leanne who was into the more like the raid, the dance yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, of yeah. it. And then obviously the prodigy started coming out a bit a bit later on and. Just, just, just there, really. What year just, was this then? This, um, it must have been like, I think I left it was like <laughs> ninety. Like we'd yeah. moved, we'd moved to Warrington by the time I think I was four when we moved to Warrington, but I was still spending a lot of time at my nan's yeah. um, with Arlian. So then, obviously, the early nineties. That's when, all, like, like I said, the prodigy and stuff started coming out, and. I can't even there was just so many at that time like what is love and 
you know yeah, that yeah. sort of stuff so it's a, it's a lot of like commercial stuff that yeah it was it was just because yeah. obviously i wouldn't have had a clue what underground dance music was and yeah, i don't yeah. even think harley Ann did at the time it was just stuff she'd have on tapes taped off the radio and yeah, yeah. like I, 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 I couldn't name you half of the tunes i just <laughs> remember them but like music in general was massive like like i said there was always we was always in the car listening to it. Yeah. It might have been Michael Jackson. It could have been as we got a bit older, like Lighthouse Family, or but just music was just always something. Yeah. And it wasn't till I got high school really that I started really becoming interested in it. Oh well, so then when you've got into sort of like your high school years and stuff like that, what was what was the sort of the cool music at the time? Well, I, <laughs> I used to ride BMX, right. and the cool music to me and my lot was all like your Sum Forty One and your Blink One Eight Two. Yeah. And, I like that. And that's, I, yeah, that's my sort of that, thing. I, I still listen to it now, like mm -hmm. occasionally, just for a bit of nostalgia, really. But yeah. when I got to like fifteen, like sixteen, uh, there was a lad in our year and. For, for whatever reason he was a year older and he he was from a different part of the country and they held him back a year and he'd come to our school and moved down to ours and yeah. but he was driving right so where he, was he from he, yeah i think it's like essex ways or like down south somewhere and he he had a car so we'd all go out in his car we we had mopeds yeah was like 16 we all had mopeds and we'd all like, <laughs> like four or five would go to his and we'd, we'd get in his car and he he just always had trans nation cds and and stuff like that and so you're starting to hear a bit more yeah, underground stuff. yeah and and then obviously after leaving school mr smith's in warrington was like right. that was the, all the, the girls in our year all started going out before the lads were like when i was yeah, 16 yeah, yeah. i looked about 11. <laughs> so, I mean, so there was no chance yeah. of me going anywhere like that but there was you know there was people in my year at school that were going the pair and stuff and coming in on a monday morning like you're you know been the pair or yeah and someone to talk about isn't it yeah and but i didn't really start experiencing that till i was actually old enough to go out i can remember like going to school and sort of like last year of school and it was like there was a certain group of people yeah, you'd out, and you'd yeah. see them in the local like like the nightclub and you'd be like you give them the all right how's it yeah. going and then you come back in and because you, you as a talk about everyone else is interested it's not yeah. not like obviously i looked about 50 when i was like 16 because <laughs> it's just i've I'd hard paper round, you know. What yeah, I mean? uphill both but, ways. Yeah, absolutely. So like, we we when we used to go out, everyone was like, "Oh, what's it like?" Blah 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 blah. And it's like that's how you get sort of. That's how I I think I got into like the nightclub music yeah. and stuff. Like the, going out and then people showing interest in it. It's like, oh well. It was it was weird. Like in Warrington, it was, like you learnt like the bars and the clubs where people were going that was popular for that kind of music before yeah. you started going out. If you know what I mean, like there's there was a. There was a club called a bar called Edison's in Warrington, yeah. and everyone, for whatever reason, it was easy to get in there. I uh, certainly, you, you yeah, know, and, and yeah, yeah. so like that was the first place you tried to go. Like the first three times, just getting knocked back, and then like one night you get in, and then you you just started going there, and then there was there was Breeze Bar as well. That was another one, and, and, at, and at that time, every club and bar was playing dance music. There yeah, was, yeah, there was there wasn't a lot of there was like one bar that played like r&b or something like that but everything else was was dance music what so year was this then 2000 2001 two yeah. like, uh, no i left school in 2002 and i think the first first time i went out was just that just around school leaving time so 2002 probably was like my first experience so, of being in a bar under age really well like, like sort of warrington area as well because you're so close like say liverpool and yeah stuff, because because ultra beat blown up at that time as well yeah like, dance music were probably quite prominent it was yeah, yeah and yeah. like pretty green eyes was everywhere weren't it when that yeah. came out was that was that 2002 Two, i think that was 2003 was it yeah. Honest, yeah so i did i, I would have just started going out regular then because like tuesday nights in warrington were, were the one <laughs> you know, it was a student night and there was more chance of you getting in on a tuesday night than yeah, there was yeah, of it yeah. on a saturday because it, it was just a bit more strict but even then it was mad you were going out with your fucking school trousers and shoes <laughs> you know what i mean and like, yeah so you looked that little bit older yeah more just smart, trying sophisticated. fucking tissue in the back of my shoes to make me taller and stuff. <laughs> it was mad but, but yeah so, so you started to go out have you discovered what like bounce music is at this point it, I, I don't think i i don't think i differentiated what would now have been called bounce music um from from everyday 
commercial dance music at the time. Yeah. It wasn't really until probably 2004, I'd say, there was um, two bars in Warrington. There was uh, Tiger 2 and Big Bar and Mikey, uh, Mikey C, right. Mike Coleman. Um, he played in both and we used to go to Big Bar on like a Thursday, Friday sometimes and I can't remember which nights he played but he was in there occasionally and that's when I think one of the first ones that I thinking back remember is that, that House Some More the Lock and Low one right. um, and I just remember hearing that and then and Love Struck and stuff and, and then we were you'd hear the Pleasure Rooms recordings and stuff like that people had them on tapes and then yeah. you know Take Me Away and, and Love Shy and all them they, they were when I really started thinking oh this is realizing yeah. that there's styles of, yeah. of dance music so and like it's like scout, what they call scouts yeah. back then it's like it's not necessarily because it's got a donk on it or not like that it's just that what was played it was, in it was certain just them demographics certain tracks and areas, that's yeah. what kind of pulled me that that was it for me then yeah um my best mate at the time porno he's in australia now um we met through going out in warrington and <laughs> He, he was just into the same style yeah, of yeah. music like our big group of mates they were just kind of in that warrington bubble i know, you exactly know what i mean what like mean, yeah. they only wanted to go there and they were happy just going to fucking four same bars and then mr smith till two in the morning going it's just easy isn't it because yeah, easy to get home and it, it, like you know you you know everyone yeah to an extent and you're just comfortable yeah and it was just and he had, I didn't drive at the time. I didn't start driving until I was 21, but he had a car and that's all we did. After we'd go to work and then at five o'clock, I'd go home, have my shower, he'd come and pick me up and we'd just be out listening to Pleasure Room CDs, Pear CDs, mm. like, and this was before really, like, the medicine wasn't even open then. It was just, it was way before that. So it was probably like 2004, five. And we, we, a few mates from round ours in Runcorn, they used to go to the pleasure rooms and it was just one night we just jumped on a bus with them and yeah. we went and that was it for do, me. Do you know what year that was? Probably 2004, 2003, 2004. Um, Can you yeah. remember going in for the first time sort of thing? I'm oh like... yeah, because it was just like nothing else. I, I remember being stood in the queue outside and because you, you know, they didn't sell alcohol at the time. It was mm. an after party. It was it was just water, Red mm. Bull, lollipops and fucking bottles of poppers behind the bar. There was yeah. there was no alcohol. And I just remember being stood in the queue and there was a lad just walking up and down the queue. For like, Gary's, I've got your Gary's here. They don't sell ale in there. Get your Gary's. Blah, blah, blah. Like <laughs> a proper like salesman just walking. Yeah. I was like, wow, what a mad place. And we got in there and it just fucking blew me mind. Can you remember who was on that night? <laughs> It would have just been like regular, I would imagine. Like, you, so you can't remember it in I, I can't remember, like, this was even before I'd started taking notice of DJs yeah. and stuff. This, like, it, it would have been like Carlos, Liam, Rob, right. the, 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 the usuals, the yeah, regulars. Yeah, yeah. I always know because I'd heard the Polo H, the cruising tune that was just everywhere, it was on yeah, everyone's yeah, phone, yeah. this, that, and the other. And, and then hearing that in the club, and I, I even remember, like, at the end of a night in the pleasure rooms, they play cruising. There'd be mm. no MCs on, and everyone in the club would just be singing or MCing Paulo H's rhyme to that tune. And, <laughs> and I, I just remember hearing that for the first time, thinking, "Who's this fucking Paulo H guy?" Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, we, and then I started like looking into who was who. We used to go to Freebie buying the newest CDs, and then you'd learn then the different DJs who, who were about. It, yeah. just, it, it was a, it was a good, good time for me to like learning music wise i just had absolutely no idea i just thought it was just dance music it was just dance music and yeah yeah I, I probably at the time probably thought that it was just a cd and a fucking <laughs> yeah it's not like yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah and i'm just in there listening to cds a con one continuous yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but obviously i started learning more became more interested in it and then we just used to go to the pleasure room every week we didn't even go to, we didn't even go to the bars in warrington no more we used to sit in his car and wait until It'd wait until fucking one o'clock yeah. in the morning. We'd pull up on McDonald's car park in Warrington. We'd have a Gary each, and we'd just sit there with pleasure and see these until one in the morning, and then just drive to Liverpool <laughs> and, just, and park the car up and yeah. just go, and then stay there till six in the morning. Class. Get in his car, go home, and that was us every weekend for I'd say a year or so. 
Did you go to any notable events there at the time? Uh, we remember? went to the yeah the the first Scouts Nation that they done. Right, yeah, yeah. And that was at the um, the Olympia. Right. Um, and then the after party was at the Pleasure Rooms. That was the first one, and uh, another two lads, four of us, went up in the car. Um, I'll never forget that because I had fucking bad eye infection, and I remember going, and there was there's a picture of us somewhere. And just my eye was just Mangly, fucking yeah, yeah. pink and fucking gooey and Ugh. it was a mess. I shouldn't have gone out, do you know what I mean? But yeah. I weren't missing that. You know, we'd got we'd say we weren't earning much money and yeah. stuff, do you know what I mean? At the time and I don't even know if I had a job at the time and we we got tickets and made our way down there and it was it was fucking unreal. That that venue nice. was mega. So sort of like moving on from there, like you you've done all you've done been going out as a raver and stuff like that and like your sanctuary's yeah. sort of um, pleasure room. Yeah, that's that was it. Yeah. yeah. So where where are you going? Well, from after that, so I think it was two thousand and five. I moved to Spain. My parents sold up, right. bought a house in Spain, and I went over there um, with them. Um, I, and all I had with me there was just my clothes and fucking pleasure room CDs. That was it. Like, right. and I remember we started going out just like there's just like square of bars and i got a job in a bar and then i started meeting a few people who lived over there yeah. and it, we, i got knocking about with a few people and they were all like from down south Br and bristol london fucking yeah. mad places and i met a couple of mates there and where about in spain were you it was uh Torre Vieja. Right. so it was um near mercia right. um and it was weird because obviously I'd been over here just taking Gary's and going to pleasure rooms. Whereas when I'd been talking to them about like the people in Spain, my mates over there, they were all drum and bass and sniffing coke and mm. like they'd never even, they didn't even know what Gary's were, a few yeah. of them, because we were only fucking, I don't know, eight, eight, seven, 18, 18, 19. Yeah. And I remember there was a lad my mate Sean and I was telling him about the, I had him listening to the music and stuff a bit and blah 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 and I was I was telling him about Gary's and just telling him how good they were and, this, <laughs> that and the other and and there was a lad over there old school Chris his name was and yeah. he was the one who he'd been over there for years he went to school over there he spoke Spanish and he could, he, yeah, could yeah. he could get anything so I remember talking to him one night and I was like can can you get tablets like and he was like yeah yeah so couple of days later he come back and he just you know, 100 guys you know, <laughs> kind of paid him whatever for them and there was a few of us about four or five was all in one of the lads houses and we just had pleasure room cds on <laughs> eating guys <laughs> second <laughs> international and, like literally and yeah. the fucking that I, I think for about three months we were just just session on guys and listening yeah. to fucking bounce in <laughs> spain and it, it, it was it was just weird, like that they'd not done that. Been, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? The, the amount of people in the world who's not been exposed yeah, to hard music is unreal. It's weird. Even like that sort of dance music, just in general. Yeah. Just they were just so drum and bass, and that is it. At that time, I don't know. There was probably other scenes. London's a big place, but yeah. Well, it's like when when I I was playing hardcore for a bit, and I was getting a couple of gigs down south, and there's like a noticeable difference so you could play in manchester and you play like what we know is like four to the floor yeah. like sort of mix but down there you, you'd have to like play maybe like a break beat or yeah, a drum and bass yeah. version and just just to keep the crowd yeah, sort of interested. interested and it's like there is definitely a divide between the north and south 100 like. and it's never been more evident than that because yeah. they just had no idea that what it was yeah the scene even existed but they would do us they were so into it like they yeah. couldn't, it, it was it was I don't even I didn't even appreciate what was happening at the time. Yeah. But looking back now, I was thinking, Class. if I hadn't have gone over there and just bumped into them four lads from London, they would never have done that. Probably. <laughs> Are you in touch with them now? Uh, one of them, yeah. 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 Is he, he not any interest? In no, him? I don't yeah. think so. No, he's a bit older. I, to be fair, the lad that I used to work for, his dad owned the bar that I worked in, and he's recently he, he watches like when I put video clips up of like. If I'm playing a gig or yeah, yeah, yeah. I put I put one up the other week from um, an infliction gig me and Pricey done, and uh, and he messes me and he's like fucking I'm I'm down your way he's a wagon van driver or wagon driver he's down here a bit he's like next time you're on let me know he said I'll, I'll come down and something other so plus it, it might be good to get him down he's probably <laughs> for his head would fall off probably no doubt <laughs> so it's a bit different to what he's used to but 
class. But yeah. So living in Spain, you sort of you've you you've opened these up to it. Where where from here? Because I mean, you just yeah sort of segregated out there really yeah right? because it's it like pre internet as well it well, didn't last that long mate to be honest i was yeah. only over there for about 18 months to maybe two bit under two years yeah. got into a bit of trouble that's come home um but then i come home back in touch with porno straight away yeah the, the pleasure rooms the lad that i used to go to pleasure rooms with and that was it medicine was open Right. Uh, so I've just literally come back and there's like frequency CDs, but like everything yeah. had just fucking expanded because there, there was really only there was Percy when I before I left there was yeah. Wigan Pier, and there was the pleasure rooms. Yeah, obviously there was the other ones that, but we didn't. They're know. the two we main ones. Yeah, 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 we didn't know about cricketer and the fucking Maxims and, yeah. and all these other little ones that were like spin offs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So I've come back and he's like. There's a pleasure rooms that's opened in Warrington, medicine. We right. got it. So I was like, I think I came home on the Thursday, and he was like, it's open Saturday, so we'll go Saturday. So, so, and, and then that was that was really it. Then that was when yeah. it, it really. I was into that. Do you know what I mean? And that that was we met the OT there. He's he's still one of my best mates now. So and when you was, came back, did you notice a difference in the style of music? Because yeah. Because you've gone from Pleasure Rooms, which is, um, you, it's more vocally yeah. and euphoric music. And there was the occasional hard bits in, in that in there, if you listen back to the CDs. Yeah. But medicine is... is it was a different ball game, weren't it? So what were you thinking when you first came back? I, well, bef I'd come up, like, I'd been, because MSM was the thing at the time. So while I was in Spain, I think Porno had sent me a few bits over, like, you know, yeah. MP, like MP3 files with tunes and bits and bobs, and so I'd I'd kind of noticed it getting a bit faster, a bit yeah. harder. I think I'd heard a few of Vinci's really early bits yeah. off the early frequencies, and then when I came home, I, I got he, yeah, it was frequency eight. Right. I'll never forget it. It's still one of my favourite CDs now. It's fucking mega, but that that was the one where I heard like the fast uh, paced yeah, MC yeah, yeah, and. Yeah, yeah. and Finchy, Azzy Roach, Nico, and and I realised what they were doing now. It was it, it's they were just it yeah, was just fucking yeah, yeah. levering it, so, and I, I liked it. Yeah, that, that simple answer was I liked it. And then he was like, "There's a club that opens playing all this." And at the time, I med, it wasn't um, before overdose kind of got their their residency in there. There was. I think it was frequency, a couple of the frequency lads that were doing medicine more regular. Like yeah. I think Alex was doing it with Sniper and and a few others. Yeah. So the first couple of nights we went there, tell a lie, going back just a little bit, when I was still living in Spain, I came home on Christmas. That was it. And we went to medicine. But this was before the overdose thing. And th that's when I I'd been and it was like, I didn't really we only went one night didn't know anyone in there it was just like a fuck dingy club that was playing that sort of music and it was good like you know what i mean we yeah got off our heads and went back, <laughs> like, went back to spain you got like, yeah you got a new, uh, you got a taste of what it was yeah like. and then i come back and he was like it's it, you know it's up and going now like we've, we've been going quite a bit so we've we started going to medicine just regularly um like i said met doherty fitting all of them really then the Wezo yeah um, all the, the sort of that. names just from just the... just I don't know how we ended up just falling in like we just got friendly with him mm. so we like we, I don't know how you'd say it but like we, I was like probably the resident fucking Gary dealer mm -hmm. in medicine like <laughs> that that's just how I was yeah that's just how I was known like I I was everyone's mate, do you know what I mean? But it was oh, you the, saw, so you were known the, as like a character. Yeah, so, and know. then we just carried on going, got dead, more friendly with the people, like running the event. Like mm. it wasn't really an event; it was a weekly thing. It was every Friday and Saturday. We were in there every Friday and Saturday. Got dead friendly with fitting and stuff, and that's how that was where my interest in the actual DJ side of it come from. Because we'd we'd see them DJing, and then. It was all recorded on mini disc, and then we'd yeah. all go back to mine and Porno's flat. We'd, we'd have the mini disc on from the night, and yeah. like that's where I made the connection of how it works, like, how it all yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. And it, it was, uh, I was just, we were just furniture in there, mate. We didn't miss. 
Class. We, we just didn't miss any, anything in there. We've seen, you know, first time blackout come down and we had the frequency lads down and it just it was just mega. Have you got like any sort of? Did you have any favourites at medicine? So like favourite DJs, MCs, or <laughs> or a set you'd be anticipating? Anticipating Well, we, I used to like obviously with me liking the pleasure rooms stuff earlier on yeah. in my raving career or whatever, but. I used to look forward to the Friday when Rob Kamer come down and do two hours. Right. Um, all the Earlham lot and and the Wigan lot that come down, they fucking hated it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was a bit slower. It was a bit fatter. It wasn't like donk and fucking. Yeah. La- he used to bring his own MC down. Um, that hypo, I think it was. Yeah. He used to come down with him, and it, it'd be a bit slower. It, it'd just be more scouts, to be honest. And, yeah. and I like that. But most people didn't. It didn't. It didn't seem to go down as well as, you know, Wezo and Fit and going fucking one fifty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slammers and it's what medicine was known for. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, I enjoyed that. I still do now. Like I listen to medicine CDs now, like yeah, regular. But at that time, that that was what I'd look forward to on the Friday. And right. then Saturdays were just Saturdays. It was so only... how did you get into the DJ aspect of it though? So, like I said, the when being around them lot in medicine and I remember I think it was a May bank holiday and me and Porno said right we're gonna have a fucking party yeah. like after medicine on the Saturday <laughs> or was it on, after after on the Sunday it was and we were like right well so we needed fucking gear in the house like mm. equipment and I remember me there was we ended up buying this fucking one of them like camp all in one units. It was like with the little fucking job. Oh right, yeah, 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 yeah. Like it was like a it, op- it was like a square box, and then you took like a triangle lid off it, yeah. and it just had two CD drawers and little fucking jog wheels and you know, the tempo faders and stuff, and and, and all the EQ in the middle. Yeah, I didn't have a fucking clue what we were looking at, but yeah. I remember uh, after medicine on the Sunday night, we we would had a mess with it, and a couple of our mates knew what they were doing and kind of showed us what, what to do and it was we were just playing on it and I think when we first got we didn't even, we had a microphone no headphones we had the fucking microphone in the headphone jack and we were like this at the thing just like <laughs> trying to beat match and it was just it was fucking ridiculous but yeah. that's when I first and again with me not being so clued up on it when I thought like if a DJ was playing in a club it's like he never made a mistake Yeah, you know what I mean everything was bang on he never missed the beat like everything was up and I remember on the Sunday morning we'd all gone back so we've got everything set up everything music's on and we have fitting was in the kitchen on these fucking decks trying to play and because I'd always like been playing on it and I fucked it up fucking shit fucked it up oh I'm shit yeah. I'm never gonna be and then I remember fitting coming around and he was on he was on the decks in the kitchen on these things and he was like well, watch this and everyone would be stood there watching him and he'd be like getting his mix all set up and then it'd come to drop in and it'd just be like blah, 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 everywhere and, I, and that, that's when I realised like everyone's gonna fuck it up it's yeah. not just like a perfect science and even the people who you see as the best in what they do it like yeah. I know I know fit and weren't fucking David Guetta but <laughs> he was playing medicine every weekend yeah, and yeah, to yeah. me that was someone that's who a was, name isn't it that though? was a name to me and to just watch him <laughs> fucking fully struggle and not be able to put a mix together for for twenty minutes, yeah, and making an absolute prick of himself. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like that's when I realised, hang on, you've got to learn and you've got to. And we had that for a bit. We jibbed it off and didn't really bother with it again. Obviously, if someone had a set of decks out, we'd, we'd have a little mess. Though he always had um, twelve tens hmm. um, in his bedroom back at them sort of times and we'd have a little go there but it it was it wasn't until really i went to australia porno moved to australia yeah. like 2010 right um and i went out there in 2011 um he just messaged me one day and he, i think i'd split up with my missus at the time and it was just one of them shit time hating me job mm. and he just rang me and he was like just fucking come out so i literally just got my visa sorted saved up for six months moved back in with mum and dad and though he the OT he um, he booked flights and a visa he come over on holiday I was moving out there and he come with me oh, just right, to yeah. come and see us like stay with us for a few weeks and 
Porno had been over there and he got into his drum and bass and he got a little set of a little Vestax controller and that's when I really, because over there really you go to work, it wasn't like here, yeah, I didn't have 50 mates I could just go and see willy nilly, so yeah, it was yeah. just it was just me and him in the house and that's when it, that's when I proper really started learning and practicing if you know what I mean, like yeah, I had yeah. time to just sit and go right what am I doing here and that's that's where it came from really, probably about 2011 when I started putting some actual effort into learning but it was all by then by the time I'd gone to Australia Bounce was like really on its ass you know, yeah 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 you know, the, the whole energy scene over there sort of died and yeah left. everything had died I think we touched it on Finchie's podcast as well and we said that like I asked him when he went out there did, did you go to any, any energy events and they were like he says there was just no yeah. scene, sort of no scene it become more house music yeah well and... funnily enough when when we was out there fin Vinci had gone out with john around the same time yeah. um and uh Vinci come and stayed with us for a, for a week um we'd we'd moved on to i think we bought a set of um 1000 mark threes by then we were off that little controller mm. um but the i played football out there what what pushed me more so was I was playing football out there and I met a couple of lads who were who, who just had you know they just had parties and they had decks and yeah like there was a lad who's a bit older he used to play the bars years back and and he still had decks in his living room and we just I used to just go around there after footy training have a mix and just learn from him and then like I said the bouncer died we still played it in the house and stuff mm. like that but like jacking was big then yeah um really big and Obviously, knowing with, with through medicine and stuff, we've been friends with, with Gidney for a good few years, and yeah. we were watching what he was doing and and seeing videos that he was putting up, and that that got us into that style of music. Then we started playing that, and we'd been at that for a bit, probably about seven months, eight months or something. And our barber, we used to go and get our hairs cut, and. The barber was a DJ and he used to play in like we lived in Canberra. Yeah. And he used to play in like some of the bigger clubs in Canberra. So we just got into a chat with him once one day and we was like, Oh yeah, we've been doing a bit, blah blah blah. I didn't think nothing of it. And he come round one day, it was like, come round, have a joint in the mix and whatnot. And uh we just started playing like all the like not it wasn't really hard, was it? But some of the mm. bigger like jacking tracks and stuff and he was like, Fuck it. They'd never, he'd never heard it. Yeah, you know, it, he had it, it like uh, roughly. I can remember when it was around at the time. It had about eighteen month period where it was like the it, the cool thing. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, everywhere, yeah. and we were playing it to him, and he was like, "Fucking hell!" And of it, he he was like, "Oh, I'll have a word with such and such." Blah, blah, blah. And we ended up getting a phone call uh, to go and we we played a, like the two of us. Yeah, um, a jacking set in a fucking bar in Canberra to to a. I don't know, 100, 200 people that had never heard it and it, it just went off. Oh, did it? Did yeah, it work? It, yeah. It, 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 like, they, there was, they were playing like, the other DJs, they were playing like house. It wasn't really tech, but it was, you know what I mean, like electro sort yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And and then we come in and just started playing this like my bouncier fucking jacking stuff. And I think, <laughs> to be fair, we didn't have a fucking clue. Obviously, everyone over here was playing at like 128s, 130s. We were knocking out about 134. Right. Because we were just used to that faster thing. It took, when we started playing it, it just sounded too right. slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Do you know yeah. what I mean? So it sounded right at the it, speed. Yeah, yeah, so, and it was too fast, to be perfectly honest, yeah. but it went off. And then about, a week later, the owner of the it was, it was um it was two lesbian women who owned the club, and one of them got in touch and she was like, "Will you just come in and have a chat with us?" And she said like a few people have come in and asked like what it, who we were, what it was, and blah blah blah, and would we put a night on in there? Yeah. And she ended up giving us I think it was the first or the last Friday of every month, and it, it that just. That was really the time then when I was like going home every night after work. But 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 yeah, like you I, into I used to work six days a week, and on a Tuesday I was off. Yeah, and I used to get up in the morning and I'd sit, I'd be on the internet, downloading tunes, burning them to CDs, practicing yeah. with them, and that I'd be ready for the thing on the Friday. And it, it that was it for for me then. I was just hooked on it. Yeah, like you, if you, you get the motivation at that point. Yeah, yeah. and it, it just obviously because 
the 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 jacking scene was new to me as well so everything i was hearing was fresh and it just kept it fun you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time and then came home 2000 and i think it was 2013 14 i came home obviously bounce i think i'd see i don't know if it was by then i'd seen finchie doing the whole bounces back thing the hashtag yeah. I, I think it was around that time when he was trying to trying to push it back again and um but i came home and i, I met my baby's mum mm. and i just because I, I was obviously wild and off the rails before i went to australia i'd gone to australia kind of kept me head as straight as possible yeah and i'd come back kind of fucking different you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And so i didn't really go back into the club and see and i just i got, I got with the baby's mum um mm. we I moved in with her and I was just normal yeah. for, for, for six, seven, five, six, seven years, yeah. whatever it was. And it wasn't really until towards the end of that relationship that I, because I'd obviously always spoke to Doherty. Yeah. Um, and I think it was, it was locked down the first one towards the end of the first lockdown. I hadn't really listened to any bounce and I definitely hadn't played any for yeah. years and years and, I just started. I'd met a few people in my job who done a bit of mixing just just in the bedroom, um, and they were like, "Oh, we're going to Pirate Studios." Yeah. Um, this was two thousand and probably fifteen now. Six? No, sorry, about two thousand seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. And I still had like all my old all my tunes on on my laptop so yeah. I, I like whipped a load of tunes onto a usb not knowing anything about this record box or or any of that <laughs> i just had loads of just tunes just blasted onto usb and we funnily enough we came to this one yeah uh was it, yeah 2018 19. anyway so i started because they were from round my ways run conway so they still liked the scout stuff they were they were playing tech house and stuff at the time but the they did listen to scout house when they were younger they were my age so yeah. they, they knew what it was and th they were into it so we came in we just started playing it and it, it kind of not gave me the bug back for djing as such but the music and yeah. then i started looking for the newer stuff that's when i started i got back onto soundcloud and i started trying to find out what was new and who was making what and yeah it just went from there and that first lockdown came and I was, it was, yeah, Doherty had, had said, do you want, you know, do you want to come off? And we'll, it was, I think the, the pubs had just opened again. Yeah. But you still weren't allowed people in your house and fucking shit like that. It was weird. Yeah. Um, it was a weird time. To yeah, it was very, very strange. So I'd gone out with Doherty, we went for a couple of pints and we ended up in some bar in, fucking up, but where he went, West Orton Ways. Mm -hmm. And he's turned around to me, showed me a video and it was like it was Rome and a few others in that Jack Berry's house. Right. And he was like, "Do you want to go here?" I was like, "Well, we may as well." Yeah. So we were nipped back to Doherty's, and I, I just I just grabbed my USB because I I I had record box since then and I fucking learned all that blah blah blah. So I just had all my tune, and I just grabbed the USB, went to Jack Berry's, and bumped into were first people he started talking i didn't really know any. i knew rome and stuff i hadn't spoke to rome for fucking 15 years or something yeah. it'd been a long time and i he was talking so easy and though he was saying like yeah he's he's, he's pretty good hmm. and easy was like fucking get on and i just remember i just plugged my usb in and just started playing like all it was all older stuff really i can't even remember what it was and then from there i remember jen coming over mm. and i'd never really had too much to do with jen previous to that and she just come over and she was just like over my shoulder and she was like oh what, what's your dj name i found out i was like oh, i haven't fucking got one <laughs> you know what I mean? and that's like it was, it was at that yeah, yeah, yeah. point and and then after that i just got talking to rome again and 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 then that's where the story starts really yeah, yeah. With, with pushing it so that that's how i got into djing as such it's a bit of a fucking long-winded tale, but you know, it, it <laughs> no, was, it was it just, it, 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 yeah, yeah, it yeah. just took ages to kind of like I didn't even try. Well, yeah. that wasn't a 
plan or anything like that. It's just something I've always done. Yeah, yeah. You know, just because you've been around it as well, like yeah. you've been exposed to it so much that it's sort of part of like your life. Such yeah, as that's it. Such. So yeah, so you've since you've been like came back or yeah. or uh, as the journeys began, yeah. what sort of what what were you getting into? What was the style like? The, the styles. Of yeah, stuff well, I, like obviously DLT being such a close mate, I kind of kept tabs on what he was doing. And mm. I'd seen, obviously, from the medicine times, that he was just blah, 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 like all that. And I'd seen his, his uh, MC in the Boo video, yeah, where it was slowed down and you could hear what he was saying. And then I started watching the others. I think i seen, like, Mitchies and, and um, Taskers and, and yeah. stuff like that. And I was... I could hear what they were saying now. And... Right. and and then and then I started noticing the tunes in the background and most of them were using like Joe's and Wayne's yeah, tunes yeah. and I was like, wow, they sound good. Do you know what I mean? Like just they just like they're driving yeah. not flat, but you know what I mean? They were just kind of like just steady all made, the way made for MCs. Just made for yeah, MCs. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, ah, and then that that's what I liked about yeah. it. But then obviously lot lockdown had come then and I, like i said i got start talking to rome and stuff so i was going to rome's like mm. during lockdown and we were having like kitchen parties and decks were out and so you'd be getting more familiar with everything yeah with and, and it it's literally just from that's what got me into it and mm. i probably probably kind of elbowed me into that antidote style of, mm. of, of of what it was just because obviously antidote just being a group of mates and that group of mates were always in that fucking house mm. and it, it, that that's where like i wouldn't even say i have a style i'm probably more known for that style because mm. that's all i've really put out there yeah but i'm sure it, like if you spoke to you know general rolling mm. you know, i always the first things that will come off mine would be like the fucking the scout stuff all the old yeah. you know pleasure rooms the, them sort of tunes and so so yeah my style is it is, is is a bit of a mixed bag but I, I do I do prefer, as you can probably tell, the 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 more rushier stuff, the, the rushier stuff, and a yeah. little bit faster. Um, but yeah, I, I'd I'd play anything, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, literally, yeah. I can still I go home, I throw the decks on, I'll just play house music. Yeah, yeah. just for two hours, just standing there and fucking dressing gowns, <laughs> you know. Classic. But my I, I do prefer like the the yeah the rushier stuff yeah, that gives you the definitely. energy. Like. So, so since you've came back, what sort of bookings have you had? I've, I've seen your name out and about and yeah, sort of thing. Well, it was um the f the first one. Oh, it was dire. The uh, it was it was it was a room two at Sanctuary, fourth right. um, of December, twenty one. Where was this at? It was at Pure. Right. Uh, it was Lisa uh, Lisa Pinnock was booked. Right. Okay. Like, yeah. It was yeah. Like yeah. the Christmas do or whatever it was and. Yeah. The, it was, to be fair, I'd sent, I'd, it was not long, in the summer, I'd met Pricey at the, um, uh, all day. Yeah, yeah. And got talking to was him. Was that Fat Goose? That? Yeah, 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 the yeah, Antidote yeah, yeah. Fat Goose and Infliction. Um, there was a mega event, but I got, I met him there and I got talking to him online and, um, I, I just sent him a mix. It was just a mix that I'd done ages ago, like, it was just all, I think I called it No Vocals, nice one. Yeah. And it was just, just flat out. And and he messaged me back. He was like, that's decent. Oof. And on the back of that, it, I think he he must have spoke to Fiddy or whoever was running the room too. And and yeah. Fid, he got in touch. He was like, well, do you want to play this? And I was like, yeah, go on then, why not? And we went there. It was fucking freezing. Me and Glover were booked mm -hmm. um, separately. So we took Glover up there. And we got in there, and the club was empty. Mm. And I mean, downstairs, upstairs, there was no one in there. There was about 12 people, 15 people in there. It was right. dire. So we went up anyway, we had a little jam and stuff. That it wasn't, I wouldn't even call it a set light. Yeah. I just, it was just me having a mess about on the decks, a couple of people jumping on a microphone and went home. Yeah. Um, that was the first one. And then... I'm sorry, I wouldn't, after that, I did, then I did the, this, oh, it was the Valentine's one, the, was it Sops, This Is Bounce, Valentine's yes. special. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
played Rune 2 there. Then, then oh, Kenty booked me for uh, Room 2 shortly after that. It seemed like when I first, after that first one, it just seemed I was on everything. Yeah. You know, the, especially at Pure, the Room 2s. Then I was getting a deviation gigs at Room 2 and, yeah. and, and Flamingos. Um, I was on quite a lot for about six months. Right. And then it just gets to a point where, like, this is costing me money. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, you know, to be fair, you know, more than half of the gigs are going and the room's nearly empty. And I was just like, this this isn't for me. And I got, I got to a point, I think I got booked for, um, it was a deviation night anyway. It was room two of Blackpool. And I was just like, I want paying for it. Yeah. Um, I'm not spending, you know, 40 quid in fuel, possibly a hotel room to go and play to 20 people for, for nothing. Yeah. And I, I, got, I got the wage for it at once. And then, funnily, I, and I sent, to be fair, I've told every promoter that's tried to book me since, you know, I'll, I'll do it for a fee. Yeah. Um. Obviously, we, we spoke about wages off pod, but, you know, there's been times where I've asked for a wage. It's been hard to get the wage. I'll Cheers. Fi fi yeah, finally got the wage and then you're never booked again. Yeah. Um, it's the way it goes. It doesn't bother me. Bookings aren't something that I I'm even that asked about. Yeah. You know, if someone booked me for a, de like a, de a decent gig and it, even if it was a decent gig and the wage was low, mm. I, I wouldn't be that asked. Um, you might want the good times. Yeah, yeah, I'd yeah, rather yeah. do a decent gig for shit money than a shit, dig shit gig for, for well, Delta money because... At the end of the day, You're even if I was getting, yeah, yeah, if I was getting hundred and fifty quid for a for a shit room two gig, I'd go. I'd hate it, and I'd piss the one fifty up the wall before I got home. Yeah. So I, I'm no better off anyway. Yeah, I'd rather go, yeah. fucking get thirty quid to pay me fuel to get to the club and and have and actually have a enjoy time. it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm about, which is why I've kind of started going into the whole just put a mix out every now and again and make sure it's a fucking belter. Yeah. That, that's that's where I'm at with it now. I'd rather, you So know. we can sort of talk about, like, sort of link to that and just say, like, you've started doing the stuff with Pricey yeah. and the the mixes. It's They're getting a lot of attention as well. Yeah, they? yeah. They, 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 they do well. And the first one was just a, a, a fluke, really. Not yeah. a fluke, you know, I knew what I was doing, but yeah. we'd, we'd been talking about it and he, he was... Because obviously... It's not. It wasn't so long ago. Everyone was putting mixes out. They were an hour long. Yeah. You put one MC on an hour mix, and it's, it's a bit fucking. Not many MCs have got an hour's worth of fucking yeah. material to just. Or like. interesting material. Like yeah, that. yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot, plenty of MCs can fill an hour CD, but we, you'd have a few vocal tracks in there to yeah. split it up. You'd like you'd, keep it you'd, interesting. Yeah, as you'd as well, kind yeah. of be chopping 10, 15 minutes out of your mix just with breakdowns and filler and blah 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 so i was talking to pricey and well at the all day and he was like i want to do something with leah well, i've got this idea and he had the whole eminem and rihanna sort of thing in his mm. head and that's what he wanted to go for and i'd not long before that conversation i'd heard um the one he did with Vinny, the cause why not first birthday yeah. and like i was saying off pod that was the one to me where i was like wow he's fucking yeah. different gravy like yeah yeah and i'd listen i listened to that mix so many times and and then he, he come up to me and he's asking about you know doing something with leah and i was we both had a conversation with him it was a good idea yeah. you know unfortunately it's never come off up to now we have got stuff in you know in the pipeline but at that time it just didn't come off and then he was like just do me a mix, half an hour, yeah. flat out. Like, no fucking about, no vocal, no nothing. Just give me half an Straight hour. Straight into it, yeah. And obviously the way Pricey does his work, you send him, he doesn't write nothing. Just doesn't write a thing. He won't write fuck all <laughs> until yeah. he's got that mix in his hand. Right. And he will just, he'll just dissect it. He sits there, he gets the mix, and he just counts the bars from the drop to the break. The drop yeah, well, we talked, about, we talked about it on his podcast, like, sort of went into it and how he writes it and he's like he, he writes for a mix for he, doesn't, a mix. he doesn't write no. lyrics for lyrics yeah, sake, yeah, he yeah. just won't do it and 
even even for things like um for his promo videos like i, mm. I got a track made for him for um for an antidote promo yeah um and he was like i, I said i i give him the idea of for that frog's legs yeah um um and he was like yeah do it and we kind of talked how he wanted it and he had ideas of what he wanted to talk about so he, you know he'll say to you oh, it has to be dark and grimy and this that and the other he come and then i sent that to wayne and wayne's come back and we got it right and it's yeah. like the way he goes over that track <coughs> just suits it so well and it, it just works yeah made because it was made for that like, yeah, yeah, and yeah, it, yeah it was just mega like we i played that at uh, an infliction gig it wasn't that busy a gig but nonetheless I played that for him. He was stood on. He was stood there, he'd, and he'd done the same lyrics as the promo video yeah. in the club. And it's like it's you know it's fucking three and a half minutes, and he yeah. just went the whole way through. And I mean, I remember being in the DJ box, and I was stood. And I was just watching. I was watching Easy, mm -hmm. watching him, and he he was just like, wow. And then as soon as he finished, as soon as he finished his rhyme at the end, like mm -hmm. the. the there's probably only 70 people in there and they were just all stood watching, yeah. clapping at the end. You know what I mean? Everyone had stopped dancing, everyone was just stood watching him and he just, he's a, he's a, he's a fucking alien to be honest. <laughs> like, I can't, I've got no other words for him, he's a fucking pain in the ass. he <laughs> does my head in. Yeah. But, you know, he's a good kid and he, he's very, very, very good at what he does. Yeah. But with regards to the mixes, he was just like, send me a mix and we'll work from there we'll go from there and I, and I did I sent him that first one and it just blew up like it, it, it just did it did well I dropped that mix I only had I had 200 I had 14 followers yeah. on SoundCloud right 14 when I dropped that mix and, and it just went fucking just went everywhere yeah, I, I yeah. didn't know I wasn't really into promo and sharing and this that and the other I just yeah. put it out and it just went off i grew up grow, like growing it on like yeah, yeah yeah and the second one we did a bit more of a push on that you know yeah. we kind of played on the the piss taking and stuff like yeah, that because yeah. we knew it, had, it created, yeah yeah no like controversy creates yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah you know i remember after about two days after we dropped there it was like fucking two thousand plays or something and we always we were driving to that infliction gig i had easy in the car and he was like the way he's the way you just put that out was just fucking genius like and we didn't mean to we just knew yeah. that if we could have sat there and said oh yeah this is his best work ever there's some really complex rhymes in there there's a letter to his kids that's yeah. fucking unbelievable and no one to be asked yeah we we just went in and went we're gonna take the fucking piss out of people here and yeah, yeah if you don't like it fuck yeah yeah it gets people talking yeah and ev and you know people are like oh am i on it <laughs> it, 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 got, it got a bit out of hand at yeah, times yeah. you know there was fucking threats made and fucking all sorts over it but it did what it needed to do and it's flying absolutely yeah he's doing pretty well with it um i just want to move to the sort of second part now because yeah. i've got questions on here that can sort of relate to how you sort of do it and yeah, stuff yeah. like that yeah so uh if you want to write questions into the pod you just uh message on instagram uh at it's time to refresh um you'll find the page if you if you already follow it if you're watching it then you can send a message up um so the one of the first questions is aside from rave music um what other well someone's put hi mate aside from rave music and eating so obviously it's the yeah. end of me <laughs> uh what what hobbies do you have outside um that you think that like we wouldn't necessarily know about and that's from mark so i i talked to pricey uh, like one of these these questions there uh, i'm mad into wrestling yeah he is yeah well. he's big like, into it isn't he um but is there anything outside of uh, I, I don't i don't really i haven't got time for yeah. hobbies i'm not gonna lie obviously the music is a hobby in itself yeah. and that takes up a bit of it's very spare time, time, it yeah, is yeah. time consuming you know it's it's um like I haven't really, I'd, I've, I've, you know, I watch the boxing and the thing, but I haven't got anything else that I'm like my daughter. Yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. it. Like yeah. I, I, I only have my daughter every other weekend, and you know, in the holidays through the year, and, and but there's nothing else. It's you this. Know, yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is when you were saying before about me. I don't even. I'm not a DJ. I'm a fucking parent. You know, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm a worker. Yeah, and and I go to work every day. And I'm a, production manager in a factory and work with chemicals that's yeah. that's that's what i am yeah this, but it's this, this is just like let your hair down type yeah, thing. yeah yeah this is just me 
shutting off from the fucking boring normal stuff, you know, just having, not that my daughter's boring, but like, you go yeah. to work is... Life, yeah, yeah, yeah just life. I just want to put my headphones on and just <laughs> turn, you know, turn everything else off. Yeah. So when you're, because obviously you're, you're a fan of the podcast, you, you're always messaging about like each episode and stuff like that. So like what is it music and sort of podcast and just just to keep get you by? I, 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 listen, I, listen, I do listen to other podcasts, yeah. you know. Um, I listen to the James English ones religiously. Class. Yeah. Um, so you know the, the true crime ones, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. the old the ex gangsters and the footy hooligans and, the, and and all that. That like I follow all that. I'm big. I'm a massive war geek. There, there's a hobby to be fair. Yeah, that's what like, I was thinking. You were yeah, saying about it. Yeah, I'm yeah. a fuck, absolute massive war gimp. Like, yeah. Anything to do with World War Two, I'm yeah. in it. Like, just, yeah. it it's sad time, but interesting time. Yeah, at the same time. it's yeah, just yeah. I don't know, and that's been, and that I think that comes from my dad. Um, obviously, not. There's a story to my dad and my dad, but my, my dad. He was always big on it, and he always used to make them fucking plastic models. I remember being a kid, and my dad just sat there for fucking weeks. You know <laughs> what I mean? Just, like, gluing bits of things. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, obviously, the interest just developed from there, and I went on, um, like, I was quite naughty in school. I was never allowed on any of the residential trips and that, but because all the history teachers knew that my only interest was the war, and we went yeah. on the battlefields, like Normandy, France, and all that. They, the school went, and they let me go. Right. So... And after that, he just I just love it. Like anything, a documentary. We went to Krakow the other week just yeah. so we could go to Auschwitz and that's just somewhere I've always wanted to go. And th that's just my thing. Like, well, do you enjoy that? Uh, yeah. I, obviously, you don't enjoy Auschwitz. No, no, you? but you just it's, experience you're, in, it, you're interested you? by yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, massively yeah. interested in it. I think we were talking when, we, when you were there and you were saying that, like, was it was the people fucking, I don't know, like fondling or something like that? Like, or like you'd seen them. We were talking on when you were there, and it's like dead disrespectful. Like you see people, oh, like yeah, like, there was yeah, there was um, there's areas where you're not allowed to talk. Yeah, so the like the clusters mass graves certain yeah. areas. So when you're there, you're not allowed to say anything. There was just like they were on our bus. There was just, I think they were French or something. So just bellends. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, like yeah. acting up and just talking when the you know the guides there. The guide was a you know, a, a, a Jewish Polish woman. Mm. So obviously there's a massive connection for her. She's trying to tell a story and you got two fucking idiots, French idiots yeah. just talking shit and it got a bit things <laughs> and she got, they got told to shut the fuck up anyway. And we the amount of things on. I've seen on, do you know the train tracks when you go yeah. in? Um, the amount of people where they've done like a fucking, they've stood on the train tracks doing mad pauses yeah. for pictures and I'm thinking, fucking hell, yeah, I've got a bit uh, of respect there, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, you're not, the, you're allowed to take photographs but you're not allowed to be in the photographs. Yeah, it's, it's a fucking it's, it's weird like it's a it's it's a part of history you yeah know, like, it's, it's, it's a mad of... place i i was saying to, to, to me missus on the way on the way home i was like you know you're, there was there's places that aren't altered at all yeah. they were fully original and you know there, there was you're going down steps into these like fucking yeah. dungeon areas and stuff and you're thinking they're fucking like nearly a million dead people walk down these stairs and fucking held onto that handrail that you walk down like, and you yeah, can yeah. fucking feel it I like, I like the idea of um, I said to my missus about it they're called what are they called uh Dark holidays. Yeah, so yeah. So, like, so you... Dark you can, tourism. Dark yeah, tourism, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go to, like, Chernobyl or you go yeah. to, like... You see a lot of people who go to, to Japan to that... We've seen where they all hang themselves. Yeah, yeah, Like, it, you don't want to go there. It's eerie as fuck, but, like... There's it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm banging stuff like that, like, but... It's just... Uh, it's, it's a weird one, isn't it? Like, because yeah. you're interested and you feel like you should go, it's like... It's not a holiday, yeah, but it is a holiday. I, like, yeah, I'm a weird fucker anyway. I'm into all that, but... Yeah, so um, we'll get back onto sort of music thing. I don't know if you want to say this. I'm cutting out the podcast if you don't want to like. Oh, but um, you sent me the thing yesterday, the print screen of um, oh yeah, the, the volume three. Yeah, uh, are doing so. It, it was um, it was a bit of a weird one. I've, obviously, everyone's fucking struggling at the minute. And I, I got like I said to you, I quit smoking weed not long ago, and mm. my head's been fucking chocker. Like obviously, everything just fucking hits you at once, and. <laughs> And I get days where I'm just fucking down and I was talking to Price. I was in work, I was my pot washes off work and I was in in the fucking thing cleaning all the buckets and things. Yeah. It stinks, it's crap. And I was in there and I, I just had shoes on and I, I just in my head I just messaged Price. It was like I'm fucking getting them, I'm getting the decks out when I get in. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, just fucking do volume three. 
Yeah. And I was like, oh, I haven't, I haven't really got fucking enough new tunes. It's like just fucking find old ones. Yeah. And like, just, the, he was like, just do it and just see what happens. And I was like, oh, I didn't really entertain the idea. Yeah. And I got home and I, I got my shower and I got the decks out and I got all set up and I was just, just playing with a few bits and bobs and then I just started writing down just tracks that went uh, together. Like bits and bobs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like planning and, that, and, so and then like... after like half an hour, I was just sat there and I just had like 11 tunes and I thought... What's, it, what's that recorded at, like half an hour or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I think this one's the 35 minutes. Right. Like, like I said, I wasn't expecting it to get done because the last one fucking near killed me. Like I was ready <laughs> to sell me decks. Oh, yeah, I yeah, hated yeah. it. Like, like Price, is, um, he's one of them. If you send him something and something doesn't quite fit the way he wants it, he'll just, go, he'll just send it you back yeah. and he will just say, that needs changing or yeah, get yeah. that tune out or he won't... <laughs> funny about he'll just go i don't like that bit change it yeah and the first one i sent him the, the volume one i sent him and it, that was it yeah. nothing he was like wow you just sent me no one's ever sent me a mix yeah. and I've not moaned about it then the second one it just came back about four or five times and it just wasn't happy with that he wanted, <laughs> he wanted another eight bars of that drop and this that new van last night I, I just fucking sat there and i just sent it and i listened back to it and i was like it's fucking I, I thought to myself that's good hmm. and then i sent it to him and i was just fully expecting like nah <laughs> he, he sent me a message and he was like uh he was like i'm not happy and i was like fuck's sake what's up with you now and he was like it's perfect <laughs> yeah, there's and, no problem uh, he was fuming like happy so, that he can't complain. yeah but i think obviously it's still it's still too soon to to drop it but the yeah. fact that the mix is done because i don't like because he'll start writing yeah he'll be writing on that now he'll be sat with that for a month or so but yeah. um you know I'd, i i i'm one for the, like again after having i have really long conversations music wise with easy like and mm. he's like you, you know you see some of these people and They've been about for six months and on volume three hundred and seventy nine. Yeah, yeah. Like, monotonous, isn't it? Yeah, I was yeah. Like, yeah. how are you even getting enough decent tunes to fill a mix? Like, don't get me wrong, I've only I think there's only fucking two or three new tracks on this mix. I don't really I'm not one who'll go, oh, I need fucking ten new tracks to put a mix out. Mm. I'll fucking go digging. You know, I'll find one that I've That's I know right. no yeah, one's yeah, put yeah, on yeah. a mix for ten years and That's it's right, a, isn't it? Yeah, and it's the same with the production. So obviously, mm -hmm. Glover and myself, um, have got the whole big peg thing going on, yeah. and you can tell me where the name comes from. Oh yeah, <laughs> Leah dropped me in it, didn't she? Yeah, um, you sit there now, yeah. buzzing behind the camera. <laughs> uh, it's just it was during like the lockdown, and we were at Rome's, and um, we ordered the Chinese box yeah. to come, and um, we were looking out the window waiting for the Chinese to come starving and I seen it was a lad who I went to school with coming delivering the Chinese so when I've said to these oh I know this lad did the thing they've obviously gone hmm, we're going to wind him up now so yeah. I've gone to the door to get the Chinese and I think it was um, it was easy and he he was <laughs> he was just screaming out the living room I'm stood there giving me mate the money and, oh, I may not seen you for years mm. and he's just he just started shouting, he's going, Carl, get that big old dick back in here. You know what I mean? Like, all this, it was, it was fucking ridiculous, stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, it kind of just carried on. And and then the next thing, there's fucking memes of, like, you know, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen him a while ago, yeah. but there's, like, a fella in, like, a, an army suit and he'd be holding a sign and right. he'd just say something stupid on it. And like, yeah. Roman Easy were putting him up everywhere. And there's just, like, Cal Hewitt's got a big peg <laughs> like that just shit like that and, yeah and in the group chats there was just voice notes coming and there and everywhere and it just fucking stuck yeah and then me and Glover just used got, it as a name yeah right. we just literally just started talking about making tunes we made a, we'd done a few bits that didn't really go anywhere and yeah we were like do, do we start doing this properly like and we just thought fuck it go on then yeah. and we, you know we've put a few good bits out now and that we needed a name and That's fucking big peg yeah, and to be fair glover's got a fucking chopper anyway so it's <laughs> fit. right uh i'm gonna sort of just finish this today because hopefully in time yeah when you just get more big peg stuff out we'll get his both on. yeah definitely so it, like, sort it, of... it'll be buzzing with that because um <laughs> he, he has been uh when I, I told him i was coming in mm. he was like oh, 
was after that big penguin. I was like, oh, I was, you know, I'll speak. <laughs> so there we go. We'll just leave it right at that, mate. So Glover, sorry, mate, but <laughs> you got you got a mention, but yeah, well, we'll leave it there, and then we can sort of review it in what six months. Yeah, man. We can sort of definitely. Come, we'll have some new bits out by then. I do a, a a big peg special. Yeah, man. I'm sure Glover will entertain us. So. <laughs> oh God, he's got stories. In. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna finish off with you today and ask. Um, as I say, you watch, you watch the episode, you know what this is. It's oh, yeah. uh, So you've got one more meal. You're about to get the electric chair because you've... I think uh, you've been, uh, you were in Spain yeah. and they fucking caught you with a big pocket, a big <laughs> fucking bag of Gary's yeah, and they're man. like, we're, we're bringing back the fucking uh, the, the electric chair just for this. Yeah. So what are you having? Last meal, I'm, I'm going to have to get an Indian, I think. Mm, All right, yeah, that's not bad. Depends what you get. Oh, a lamb madras. No, I, I, I get. Right, yeah. I, I, do you know what? It's weird. I fucking hate onions, right? Yeah. She'll tell you, I fucking despise them or what have them on nothing. Fucking, yeah. But I'll eat an onion badge. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just different, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So I'd have like, like uh, probably a mixed platter to start with. Then I get a lamb address with right. some, I don't know, mushroom rice or something. Nice. Um, dessert. Nam bread? Oh, yeah. What would nam bread you get? Bishwari. Not bad. Um, dessert, probably. I don't know. I'm a, Sticky toffee guy, I think that's pretty nice. Me. Sticky toffee custard. I was being a fat cunt last night, and she, like uh, she says, Oh, we've, I've put this out, but I don't fancy it now. And she like defrosted like a chocolate gato, and I had yeah. a full chocolate gato oh. sitting there, and I felt ill afterwards. <laughs> like, and I was in bed at night, and I was like feeling awful. Yeah. Like, well, it's morning feeling shit, but full chocolate gato just out. It hadn't even fully defrosted it, at the it, bottom, yeah. and I was just fucking hoofing it. It's deceiving, though, gato, and yeah. it looks dingy, but it's like dead airy, and that's yeah. so you can just scan it and then you just feel like death yeah so I just want to say thank you for coming no on worries. mate today uh, as I say like six months time I can imagine we'll have a we'll have a you and a Glover one on yeah, or I might even get pricey on and you can you can do yeah yeah talk well, about uh, the thing and how he's right I don't like, like to spend too much time with pricey he does me fucking head in but <laughs> no yeah we'll get on but yeah I just want to say thank you for watching um uh, thanks to you for coming on as no well worries, mate. and um, if you've enjoyed it then share it with your mates I really appreciate it as I say it gets far um, new ears are always good ears I suppose and if you don't like the podcast fuck off like why, why have you made it this far and you're fucking an hour and a half into the into the episode like why are you still watching <laughs> yeah so thank you I'll see you later